no signs today. Oh, I love signs. I know you like signs. You know we're gonna do signs. <laughs> we, we we'll do signs another time, I'm sure. All right, but you're gonna come say hello. Yeah. 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 I'll, you'll need to carry me though. I'll need to carry you. Okay. Look, because I can't. Oh, yeah. I can't see from oh, here. Here we go. Say, say hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. So, welcome to this sunny day. Welcome to the sunny day. A time to praise. Time to praise. To pray. To pray. To hear God's word. To hear God's word. And have a bit of fun. And have a bit of fun. Yeah. Is that alright? Is that alright? Are you going to say, copy everything I say? <laughs> Okay, so welcome to everyone to Sunday morning, our worship together uh, from the Ascension Vicarage Garden. I'm going to let Frankie down. No, uh, no, no. Oh, okay, okay, so I'll just say it out. And uh, welcome to everyone. I'm going to get close so I can see people's names. So, welcome Hi, to coming. Jenny. Good morning, Maria. Morning, Malcolm. Morning, Cheryl and Cheryl. Uh, if I've missed people, I'm really sorry. Uh, what is fear? Uh, your time will. Uh, Pam, Pam, Lola, and all people. Can I win it? If I win it, then I can Right, I'm going to let you down because I need to no, get some no, words. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Ah, thank you. Yeah. Well, good morning and uh, welcome to us. Um, we are going to worship together and it's a time where uh, we're going to come together over communion. And, and, and the theme today is where is our hope? And uh, we're going to carry on that theme uh, this morning through our prayers, through our praise, uh, through the word from the gospel of Luke. And uh, if you've uh, just joined us, uh, welcome. The order of service, uh, you've got it two ways. Those that are with the Ascension family, I've got an email address for you. I've had an email to you. Uh, but if you wanted to get an order of service so you can follow the words, the responses and the songs, just go to our website, ascensioncc.org.uk. Uh, and uh, there's a button that there says order of service and today's date you click on that and it'll take you to the document uh, and the order of service will be there and you can follow it there okay right and well, I've got one a copy here so As always, the uh, responses are in bold. Morning, Claire. Morning, everyone. So, Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Shall we pray together, a prayer of welcome? Lord, we thank you for this new day, the gift of life breath that you breathe into us we now pray for this time together as we search our hearts to know what your will is for us as we give thanks for our life praise your name seek to pray for the needs of others and ourselves to hear your word through scripture and also through the holy spirit and we reflect on a week gone by another week uh, with overshadowed by the virus and the impact it's having on all of us. But we pray, Lord, that uh, where we ask that question, where is hope? I'm sure something uh, has it to do with you. So, Lord, we pray that you be with us this morning by your Holy Spirit. Guide us uh, in the speaking and the listening and in the praying and the praising. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And uh, if you wanted to uh, follow, uh, obviously you've got your order of service, but if you just want to make, make comments, uh, and obviously there's some emo emojis you can use as well, so maybe as we're praying, if you put the prayer emoji and maybe an RM, uh, an amen, sorry, maybe if you're worshipping, there's a clap emoji, isn't there, as we're worshipping, or a raised hands emoji as well, uh, and if you like the sermon, uh, you can put a clap as well, if, you know, if that's up to you. Okay, good morning, Cliff and Eileen, welcome, morning, Stephanie. Uh, so, we are going to sing our first worship song and when we talk about hope uh, it's not just hope for us as the church not just hope for us as individuals but hope for all nations and so we sing jesus hope of the nation
from the dead, conquering fear, our Prince of Peace drawing us near, Jesus our hope, living for from the dead, conquering fear, our Prince of Peace, drawing us near, Jesus our hope, living for that word hope don't we quite often and sometimes it's overused and we are living in a time where that's what we're hanging on to isn't it hope of what is to come and we're going to hear more about that through our bible reading uh, and through our reflection on that but the hope uh, of 2000 years ago was fulfilled and that's why we're here that we remember that act on the cross that Jesus came uh, to be with us to suffer as we suffer and to die for us and in that there is a, a release a freedom from the chains of sin uh, a release from us that we have not that burden of guilt uh, of all the things that we do wrong say wrong uh, yesterday today and to come so we always come to a time of thanksgiving yes that yes as we open up but also a time of penitence as we look inside ourselves as we look at maybe the times that we've been selfish, maybe look at the times when we've just thought of ourselves and no one else. Uh, maybe we think of the times when actually it's all about show, that uh, we want to sort of show what we are to the public, to the world, uh, whereas actually inside of us there's something deep going on. So let's think of all those times uh, uh, that I've just spoken about, today and yesterday, uh, and just ask for God's forgiveness. So let's pray. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. We say together, We, Lord Jesus, we confess to you the wrong things we have thought, said and done. We are sorry that we haven't loved you or loved other people. Thank you that you died for us and rose again. Please forgive us and set us free for the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Should we do an amen? Amen. Every Sunday there is a special prayer to mark that particular day and today's prayer uh, relates to the appearance of Jesus to his disciples. We, we are still in what's called Easter tide, we're still in Easter season uh, and so we're still reflecting on that time where Jesus rose to life and appeared to his disciples. 
So let us pray that we may walk the risen life of Christ in glory. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 And um, some of you, if you follow Twitter, and some of you, if you uh, received a message from me this morning, uh, would have seen a picture uh, of me and Lauren. Uh, I was sitting there with a, with a barber's gown on, and uh, Lauren uh, was behind me with a comb, and you may have missed it, a set of clippers. And uh, this, this would have been, and it was the first time that, that Lauren uh, has clipped my hair. And uh, she offered it gladly uh, as my hair was getting a bit messy. And, um, and here, here it is. This is the result. And I'll show you the back as well. Uh, Lauren had a fantastic job. And I don't need to go to the barbers anymore. Uh, I'll, just, uh, I'll just get Lauren to do my hair. So thank you to Lauren for that. And Frankie's. And she did Frankie's as well. Frank, uh, do you want to show your hair? Come in. If you haven't noticed it already. Matching haircuts, yeah. Oh, I'll show you the back. Hey, I'll show the back as well. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll go back to my car. <laughs> you go back to where you are. Okay. I'm going to say a few more good mornings. Uh, who's joined us? Please do comment to say show that you're, you're here. Uh, morning, Carla. Morning, Millie. Hello, hello. Morning, other Cheryl. And um, and if you want to comment about the hair, I don't mind. Um, I'm sure it will be good. Uh, morning, Julie. Um, yeah, I think I've got all the mornings in. Robert was already there. And Tasha, fantastic. Uh, well done, Lauren. Quite a few of those here. Thumbs up. Fantastic. Great. Okay, and I know a few of you. You may not have a Lauren in your household. You may even not have a pair of clippers. Uh, but the time will come when you can be relieved of the hair that's growing. Uh, out of shape maybe uh, a wow from Dory okay we haven't just come here to look at haircuts <coughs> right? if, if you think you've tuned in and you thought you come to a morning service you have uh, it's not all about haircuts this isn't a fashion show uh, this is about worship okay so enough of that we're gonna sing again and um, we'll hear from we'll hear from Luke's gospel um, but the idea of actually um, seeing Jesus and listening and hearing isn't to do with our eyes and our ears it's actually to do with our heart so to really actually listen we need to open our hearts so we're going to sing uh, one song that speaks about that about opening the eyes of our heart uh, and then we're going to sing about who Jesus really is he is Lord and he reigns on high Again, if you just joined us, the order of service is on our website, www.ascensioncc.org.uk. Uh, click the button, it says order of service on the front page, and the order of service will come up to you. You don't have to print it out, just have it on your screen. Uh, and that's what we're following today. Uh, and uh, if you just want to make any comments uh, on the feed, uh, just to show that you're here, which is great. Uh, maybe the hands together for when we're praying, maybe the hands in the air while we're worshipping. Maybe a clap for the sermon when it's finished. Or maybe a yawn, actually, if you want me to hurry up. Um, it's probably up to you. Should we sing? Enough of me. Open the eyes of my heart.
Please do be seated. Can't get used to not saying that. Um, we now come to a time where we hear God's word through scripture. And Sarah's going to come and read from Luke's gospel. Uh, Luke 24, 13. I'm going to wait. And I'm going to look at the roots. Look at 
this is my place. Sit down then, your place. Good morning. The reading is taken from Luke 24, verses 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village, village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for your word written down for us, spoken through our lips, listened through our ears. We now ask you that you would, by your spirit, open our hearts so that we may receive this word into our full being and live for you and with you in this world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we get an amen? Amen. amen. You may have noticed, if you've just joined us, something different about me today. Yes, it's the hair, or lack of it. Uh, in these times of lockdown, like many people, uh, I haven't been able to get to the barbers for my usual haircut. So thanks to Lauren, who used to be a hairdresser uh, in a previous life, I've been able to get a homegrown trim. Well, more than a trim, if you, if you look at the back. Um, but I do miss going to the barbers. Uh, uh, and for the men listening in, uh, I would recommend him. He's the Gents Hair Salon on Barking Road on the corner of PR Lane, as and when he opens again. And I enjoyed going to him, uh, not just for the haircut, uh, but also for the chats that we would have. He is a Chelsea supporter. Yeah, you don't have to boo, by the way. He's a Chelsea supporter. So we would talk about the weekend, the fixtures that are coming up at the weekend, how our teams were doing, uh, and we would also do the usual, have you been away? Or are you going away, going somewhere nice? Those usual conversations that you have with your hairdresser. And normally I'll be able to tell him what we had planned for our holidays. Uh, after Easter, uh, we all would normally go to away to spring harvest for the week, uh, and then we'd go somewhere in the summer. For all of us, sadly, 
this can only be a distant dream at the moment. I have to wake up to the reality that I'm not going anywhere because none of us are going anywhere right now. In reality, we were booked to go to our Easter break, which we were very much looking forward to. And I also had a period of what's called extended study leave planned for the autumn, hoping to visit the Holy Land, do some walking, go on retreat, read some books. We had hoped, but no more. Of course, for many, the virus has crushed much greater hopes than that. Hope for more years with a loved one. Hope about jobs and families. Hopes for the future. And it's as if we've all carefully been piecing together jigsaws of the big picture of our lives, only for someone or something to crash into us and knock all the pieces flying. We are left trying to put the pieces back together and make sense of what we thought the picture was. The disciples on the Emmaus Road that we'd heard about were doing just the same. We had hoped, they said, that Jesus was the one to redeem Israel. But the man they had placed their hopes on was dead. The Messiah and his kingdom had come to nothing and the women were coming out with some strange stories about a missing body, an angel and a gardener. Their hopes had been sent flying like this jigsaw and here they were trying to pick up the pieces, trying to make sense of it as they walked together down the road. We had hoped, they said, in their hopelessness. And it was in that moment of hopelessness that they encountered Jesus. Of course, they don't recognise him immediately and he doesn't reveal himself to them either. First of all, he listens to them. He invites them to tell their story. Now, that's a great lesson for us, uh, particularly in a world where we just want to push our story on people and our news. Uh, I sometimes I've been on these listening courses where usually our normal fact of life is we're listening, waiting for a gap so we can say what we're saying. And if we do that, we're missing what that other person is saying. But Jesus here, no, he gives them time, he gives them space, and he listens to what they have to say. He lets them tell their story with all its excitement and expectation. And in the end, it's crushing disappointment. And then he tells them their story again, but this time using the scriptures that they knew so well to help them to see that the death of the Messiah was part of the great story of God's love for creation and that included them. I don't think Jesus just picked bits out of scripture, I think he went through the whole lot with them. This says something about our reading and understanding of who God is and his very nature. These 66 books of the Bible that we have today all point to Jesus. So it's important that we take it as a whole rather than pick out the bits that we like or pick out the bits that are in tune with our own belief. The Word of God, the whole Word of God, even the bits that are uncomfortable are useful for us. It's either all God's Word or it's not. Paul says to this uh, in Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness. Now God prevented these two disciples from recognising Jesus and I think it was to convey a deeper truth. Even if we were to see, we might still not believe. Remember last week we talked about that idea of what makes us believe. So we must trust the testimony of scripture. Jesus tells us that we must have what's called this scriptural truth to understand who he is. Romans 10, 17 tells us faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ. So it's quite possible then that Jesus went through the whole thing as it would have been then, pointing out how God has come into their lives and that Jesus had to suffer. And we can see this quite clearly 
through some of the prophets, particularly Isaiah, and he has some pointers for us, Isaiah 7.14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive, have a son, and name him Emmanuel. Just to think that Isaiah was writing this hundreds of years before Jesus came into the world. Isaiah 53.3. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of suffering, who knew what sickness was. He was like one people turned away from. He was despised and we didn't value him. And just a bit later, a few verses later, Isaiah said this. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb led to the slaughter and like a sheep silent before his shearers. He did not open his mouth. Having revealed or reminded them about this scripture no wonder there it says were our hearts not burning within us while he was talking to us on the road and that's a question for us isn't it does our heart burn when we hear God's word I was reminded by my archdeacon earlier this week whose middle name uh, is Wesley uh, what every Methodist knows that John Wesley experienced a state, a case of what that is, in, uh, in May 1738, he was burdened by trouble. He uh, was lacking hope. So he went to St Paul's Cathedral for St Evensong and heard the choir sing Psalm 130. Out of the deep have I called unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. And he went on to a meeting in Aldersgate where someone read from Luther's preface to the Epistle to the Romans. And as Wesley put in his journals, he said this, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warm. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation, and an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. Even in the depths uh, hopelessness Wesley heard the words and his heart was warm are we open to that that possibility as we read the word in times of trouble Jesus will walk beside us and warm our hearts with his good news guiding us in our thinking and our understanding through the power of his spirit that in the face of all that we're going through of all the uncertainty, of all the fear, our hearts may be strangely warmed. We may know that we can trust in Christ alone for our future. Then, from then there, after Jesus had opened their eyes, maybe opened the eyes of their heart, to what had really gone on, time had passed, it was getting late, and they approached the village. And where they were going, uh, they were going to stop. And Jesus didn't stop, he was actually going a bit further. Jesus shared the word with them, gave them back a little bit of hope that they needed to hear, and then was quite prepared to carry on without them, leaving them where they were. Now that's not necessarily the Jesus we know, is it? That Jesus doesn't leave us where we are. The Jesus that comes alongside us uh, stays with us. So what's going on here? Well. What's going on is this. Jesus is not imposing himself on them. He's not saying, I must stay with you. What he's doing is opening up with them a choice. He's giving them a choice. And they chose to invite him to stay with them. Having heard all the scripture about Jesus, there needed to be a response. It's not enough to have knowledge of Jesus. I sort of mentioned it last week. We can read the Bible all we like. It's not enough that we have this academic, academic knowledge of who Jesus is. We can only do that, really know him, if we invite him to stay with us as the disciples did. So it requires from us a response. And then Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And it was at this moment that God decided to fully reveal who he was. What this does tell us is that it's only in fellowship with him that we can experience him to really know.
know him. Fellowship with him was not about their ability to see him, but about taking him at his word. And this is shown very clearly once they really know, once they've really got it, he disappears. Then they remembered how their hearts were on fire when Jesus was with them on the road. And finally, after their feelings of hopelessness, hope is fulfilled. These two disciples had a hope that was misplaced. They had felt that hope was lost, but it was a hope that was misunderstood. They were hoping in the wrong thing. We could say it was an earthly hope, one constrained by a limited view of the world and a limited view of God. And that can't, can be us, can't it? We can pin our hopes on something or someone and very often we lose hope because we have been let down time and time and time again. Jesus could have come back from the dead with this great fanfare, with trumpets, with worshipping angels. Look, I'm back. It's great, isn't it? think he would not he a great showman but no he appeared gently to a woman in the garden he walked beside two hopeless men on the road and he goes on walking beside people revealing himself the word and the work of the holy spirit bringing hope and healing to a troubled world just want to share with you uh, a poem. I can find it. I was going to save it till later. It, it was a poem uh, written uh, a while ago. I just want to share this with you. Sorry about this. And people stayed home and read books and they listened and they rested and they did exercises and they made art and played and they learned new ways to be and they stopped and listened deeper someone meditated someone prayed someone found his shadow and people started thinking differently. The people healed. And in the absence of people who lived ignorant, dangerous, senseless and heartless, the earth also began to heal. And when the danger ended and the people found each other, they grieved for the dead and they made new choices and dreamed of new visions and they created new ways to live and completely healed the earth just when they were healed. This is a poem for today, isn't it? That in our grief, in our lockdown, we have opportunities to live a different way and we also have an opportunity to hope in a different thing. Does it surprise you that this poem was written in 1869? Very prophetic, was used in the Spanish flu epidemic in 1918 and certainly a poem for today. We can hope that things will get better, can hope that we will feel better, that good things will happen to us and to our family. Sometimes that doesn't happen because we've either not invited Jesus in or having invited him we've not been a very good host. Our earthly hope needs to be replaced by a heavenly hope hope held out for all of us in Jesus' death and resurrection. And that's the only hope that won't let us down. So brothers and sisters, friends and family, where are you pinning your hopes on this morning? Yes, for an end to the lockdown. Yes, that we can see our friends and family again. Yes, so that we can come together physically as the body of Christ. Yes, the treatment and ultimately a cure for this virus so that all our future hopes can be fulfilled. Well, in time, these hopes will in some ways be fulfilled. 
but we have two hopes here. Hope that poem means we have a new normal, that actually we'll experience uh, grief and darkness. We will find new ways of being family and friends and new ways of living. And we would appreciate the way of life. And as we come out of this, we are much kinder to each other, kinder to the rest of humanity, more appreciative of one another. Also, we have a hope for a future that cannot change. We don't know what the future will hold. Even for those who walk every day with Jesus, there is no promise of health, no promise of wealth, no promise of happiness in this life. But the old hymn is true. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on the way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. God's hope for us is that we put our hope in him. Not only that, but to tell others about that hope so that they too can come to know the risen Lord who transforms lives. Shall we pray? Lord, we are reminded of two disciples walking away dejected, hopeless. But you came to fulfil the hope. And Lord, I pray that it might be for us as we are in our homes, as life has changed dramatically for us, that we use it positively, that we hope for a better world, hope for healing and our part of that. Hope for healing for us, hope for light in the darkness, and hope for love that we share with each other. We pray also for the hope we have in you, that regardless of what happens to us here, our future is certain, our life is eternal, and only through you. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen going to uh, a swig of drink. Whatever it is. No, I was. Okay. We are going to come to a time of prayer. And if you only just joined us, I want to share with you that poem again. It's so, so powerful that it can really influence our prayer life. Uh, and maybe we can hold on to a few of these words uh, to help us pray. So I'm going to open up again with this prayer. Poem, sorry. And people stayed at home and read books and they listened and they rested and they did exercises and they made art and played and they learned new ways to be and they stopped and listened deeper. Someone meditated, someone prayed someone found his shadow and people started thinking differently and people healed and in the absence of people who lived ignorant dangerous senseless and heartless the earth also began to heal and when the danger ended and people found each other they grieved for the dead and they made new choices and dreamed of new visions and they created new ways to live and completely healed the earth just when they were healed. Let's spend a few moments reflecting on those words and some of those words will have meaning for us where we are. That we hope for a better world. That's my hope too. Shall we pray? We may live in our places of home, feeling dejected, maybe the darkness is overcoming us, maybe the distress of it all is coming too much, but 
I pray that you would come alongside those who are hopeless at the moment and bring hope. Hope not just for the world to change, but also hope for the eternity. That in you we are the fullness of life, not just for here, but for heaven. God, I pray for our world still struggling to come to terms with this virus, struggling to know how to react and how to respond. Lord, I pray for wisdom in the decisions that are made at government level that impacts all of us. I pray for the advice that we are given, that we would follow it, that we would not be foolhardy, that we would not think that we are superheroes. pray for the families who may be struggling with young children where school is closed. Lord, I pray that you would work in them, not only in their situation, but that you would bring others to help, others to comfort. And maybe there are people within our church and wider that maybe it's just a phone call, a phone call from a friend phone call from a member of family just to see how they are, just to check in. Pray that we would raise people up just to do that. Lord, I pray for the needs of this community. We live in a very dense, uh, populated place. People living on top of each other. Pray that you would bring freedom, light in the darkness. Pray for our NHS workers, for our key workers, workers that are keeping things going, workers that are keeping people alive. We pray particularly for the nightingale across the road, that thankfully is not anywhere near to capacity, far from it. Pray for all those who are working there, supporting them, the chaplaincy team, the support workers, those serving coffee, those providing food. We pray for our food bank as it continues to be light in the darkness for those who have got nothing. Give thanks for those who support, who donate, who help out, for those who pack and drive and deliver, and also to speak to those who are in need. We give thanks for them. And Lord, we do pray for those who grieve, that we will know someone who knows someone, or maybe someone closer to home, who has died through this terrible ordeal. And we bring those people to your presence, Lord. And a special mention of prayer for Berta, Bobby and Eddie, as they continue to mourn their daughter, Kerry, in a year since she tragically died. Be with them, comfort them, and as you come alongside them, may they know the hope that is in store for them. So Lord, we lift these prayers and those others that are on our heart to you, God of mercy and judgment, God of love and compassion, hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You will have your own prayers, I'm sure, to add to those. As always, um, at this time, we recognise that Christ came to bring peace. And that doesn't mean to heal the world from wars and conflict and arguments and disease, but actually came to bring peace into our hearts bring peace into our lives, even with all what's going on around us. That uh, it doesn't take away uh, the fact that people still fight, people still argue, people die. There is disaster and disease and distress, but actually we can have peace knowing that he is here. Uh, and that's an inner peace, a calm within, even when all around us is going mad. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. 
Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let's share with one another a sign of peace. You might want to put a comment on there. Peace be with you uh, on, on the uh, Facebook page just to show uh, this sign of Christ's peace with each other. I know ordinarily we would hug and kiss and shake hands and, and we're missing that, terribly missing that. Um, but we do what we can. Uh, so if it's a hug emoji or, or whatever, you might want to do that one. Uh, or just say, peace be with you. Okay. Peace be with you, mate. All right. Do you want to say peace to everyone? <laughs> say, peace be with you. So this is um, this is a time of communion. Again, it's it's distressing to, to not be able to share this physically with you, um, but we do come to the table, this virtual table, um, together, um, because actually the gift of bread and wine is for all of us. Um, and, and even though you're far away uh, from here now, um, this is for you. Uh, that Jesus died uh, and gave Himself up for each one of you, and we recognise that at the table. Uh, it's no less powerful uh, than it was if you were here in church building. Okay, so we're going to sing our offertory hymn, and uh, at this point, normally we would bring our gifts to the table, uh, but obviously we can't do that physically. But you do have an opportunity uh, to give. Part of our Christian life uh, is all about giving, not just of ourselves, our time, uh, uh, and uh, our gifts, but also of our money to support uh, the church to support work that's going on here and so you have an opportunity to to do two things you can go onto the website uh, and donate as a one-off or you can set up regular giving uh, on the online banking and we've given you the account details there as well so um, there was an invitation isn't there that, that God comes to us but sometimes we have to come to him so we're going to sing Lord I come to you
The Lord is here. His spirit, His spirit is, is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks, thanks and praise. praise. Almighty God, good Father, to us all your faces turn towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. The signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread He gave thanks and he broke it and said, this is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, this is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now on us that these gifts we may feed on christ with open eyes and hearts on fire may we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you father son and holy spirit all blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever amen we now come to the time of the Lord's Prayer and ordinarily in our church we would come together uh, and hold hands uh, and so we're going to hold hands here uh, and maybe symbolically uh, you might want to put a hand out, you might want to put a hand on, on the Facebook page uh, just to show that actually we're holding hands together. Thank you. You all right? You okay? Come here, I want me to hold you. There you go. I'm hold the hand. Hand. <laughs> 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 you have this in your house? Oh. Yeah, it's getting a bit of a Yeah, yeah. Right. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are now and forever. Amen. Please do take a seat. I just can't get used to not saying that. Sorry. Um, We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread.
on theology and doctrine and what's right. Uh, I tend to go out the window at this point um, because we are in uncharted territory here. Um, I just want to assure you, particularly that prayer, the apoglesis, as the fancy name for the spirit coming down. It says, send your spirit on us, okay? So that we are coming to transform people to the table. Um, uh, and it is for us, wherever we are, body and blood of Jesus Christ, okay? So the spirit works in us. We're going to say this prayer together. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you physically, sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. And we say together, Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. We are almost, almost to the end of our time together. There are a couple of things, plus the final worship song, that we will sing. And um, just put that out there. And we have our notices. Uh, just the normal notice, it seems every week, that we meet for morning prayer uh, here uh, at the Vicarage Garden at 9 o'clock for about 25 minutes, half an hour together. Uh, that's uh, streamed live on Facebook. And evening prayer, uh, every evening uh, uh, in the weekday apart from Fridays at 7.30. This Monday, Monday coming, our evening prayer will be slightly earlier at 7 o'clock. Okay? So just those who enjoy the free evening prayer, our evening prayer together will be slightly earlier at 7 o'clock. I have been thinking, and I'm going to share this uh, as well, around as well, about how we uh, help families, and particularly with young people, uh, when we have no Sunday school here. Uh, and so um, those of you who are on there, I'm going to be calling you, those of you who are Sunday school leaders, that we need to do something, I think, creatively, to help families uh, uh, with, their, with their children uh, and through sort of Sunday school at home. Uh, and of course, there's lots of online activities that you can do already, uh, but it'd be great if we could like to help you to share stuff with you as well and for our older young people I do um, point you to resources that are provided by New and Youth for Christ uh, through their Facebook page through their Twitter but also through Instagram um, and if you go onto their pages they've got some great resources for you uh, for, for older young people and sort of 11 and above so please do ch uh, take those out now it may not escape your notice that BBC uh, had this big night in, and part of sorry, I'll do birthdays first. I'll do birthdays first. Right, birthdays. So we're going to do birthdays first, as we all do. Now I do know, and she won't, she'll forgive me, that it was Sophia's birthday yesterday, uh, and um, she had a bit of a, a Zoom. A Zoom party, actually, uh, throughout the day, uh, and and uh, I was on it as well. And we played some games online. So Sophia was her birthday yesterday. So this is an opportunity to give thanks uh, for all those who've uh, gained an extra year uh, on God's earth. And we do give thanks for new life and an extra. So is there anyone else celebrating a birthday? Now uh, we missed Sue D as well. We missed Sue D last week. Uh, so uh, Sue D and Sophia celebrating. Uh, her birthdays. Anyone else celebrate a birthday that you, you want to share with us? Hannah. I don't know if she's watching, but my cousin. Oh, yeah. Birthday is tomorrow. Right. And her due date. Oh, she's having a baby. Is she? <laughs> yeah. Has already been and gone. So we're hoping that we also have a new edition this week. Right. Okay. So, Sue, Sophia, Hannah. Anyone else celebrating a birthday that we should know about? Do that, isn't it? <laughs> I'm good. But it's very impatient. No. Right, that'll do. So, um, words of scripture. Oh, 
then we'll bring them out. So if you want to take Hannah's. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Hello. Pretty apt for having a new baby. <laughs> so this Hello. is Sue, Sue D. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, <laughs> beholding the evil and the good. Well, even, even in India. One. Uh, Sue, if you didn't know, uh, travelled to India to see family before the lockdown uh, and is now locked down in India. She was due back on the 9th of April uh, and so she's still out there. Thankfully she's with family. And this is for Sophia. If you're still watching Sophia, this word of comfort and support is for you. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, so I will help thee. There we go. Fear not, Sophia, for God's help is at hand. So we're going to say, sing happy birthday. Uh, and please do stay with us. Uh, there is a surprise coming. We thought we'd leave it to last. And so please do stay with us. And we're going to say happy birthday to Sue, to Sophia, and to Hannah. In that order. Three, two, one. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sue, Sophia, and Hannah. Happy birthday to you. Right. Now, again, going back to this big night in that we experienced uh, on telly. Uh, and it's rekindled an old song uh, that was a comedy programme called Shooting Stars uh, with Matt Lucas. And uh, you may have heard it and you may have this tune in your head that cannot go away, uh, where Baked Potato is uh, giving advice in this current lockdown, in this current virus. Okay? And Baked Potato uh, is giving advice about washing your hands, about staying in and all that. And, um, and, and laugh. Last night, we you can't get a tune out of our heads. Last night, uh, we were sitting there, and and I thought, would, wouldn't it be nice to sort of come to change the words a bit, uh, and remind ourselves what life with Jesus is like, and seeing Jesus uh, and and the Father giving uh, us advice on how to live. So, uh, we don't cringe, please. Uh, we do have some words, and if you really want them, uh, we can send them to you. Uh, uh, we've got the music as well, and Sarah and me uh, are going are are to try and sing it, and Laura and try and try and sing it together. Okay, so I've got the music. Give me a minute. Twenty-three of you are still here, still with us. Good. You can you can sing and cringe along. Uh, right, I'll find it now. Have you lost it? I can't believe it's gone. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Found it. Found it. Found <laughs> Is it. Found that it. good? <laughs> Alright, it's here. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. What bit, I, what bit am I doing? The bit you did yesterday. Oh, that, just that bit. You've got the words. Yeah, the words. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. You can see your lips. <laughs> we're going to do this again. What? Come on, come on. 
So sometimes I the words. The words. Are, yeah, you need the words. I've got the words here as well. I've only got, I've only got one line. It's how we got the change. So um, so we'll um, we'll do we'll do that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, persuaded persuaded Lauren, Lauren as well. This is worship, by the way, just in case yep. you're tuning in. Uh, we've got new words for the baked potato song. And all the Ten Commandments are in there. And all the Ten Commandments are in there. You, you find oh, them yeah, out. All count them. No, no, they've got four in them, aren't they? So you ready? I can send you the words uh, if you wanted to share that with the baked potato song just tune in the background uh, please please do please make comments uh, as well still with us good here we go that's the Facebook there for you so um, if you if you if you want to have those words um, uh, for you then I'll turn it off thank you so So that tune is now in our heads and we will not let it go for the rest of the day uh, and uh, I will send those, I'll send those words. Uh, uh, yes, Sophia, it is cheesy baked potato. Yes, it is cheesy. I know, I know. It's got a strong message though. It's a good message. Uh, if you get the tune in your head, get the words in your head, it's a strong message. We're going to end our time together by coming to worship together uh, with our final uh, worship song. And uh, if, um, if you've enjoyed today as we have for worshipping God, God, then please do come back for tomorrow morning for, for morning prayer and, um, and next Sunday. Uh, we're also preparing uh, for the time of Pentecost uh, where the Holy Spirit came down on the new disciples all in one go. And so we're preparing for that as well. So we're going to sing. Uh, about the power in the name of Jesus. Okay, Sarah, turn off all the machinery. Right, and, uh, and she's there now, yeah. which is really, really good, in place. So we, we are going to sing. There is power in the name of Jesus.
Just so